Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar that will run through the weather warnings as we do have yellow thunderstorm warnings in force for areas in the south of England tomorrow and we'll also have a look at the various short range models to get the potential for these severe thunderstorms over the course of the next 48 hours big big thunderstorms coming for quite a few and some have seen some thunderstorms today some flash flooding has been seen in parts of north wales and it looks likely these sort of conditions will be more widespread over the coming days we'll also finish the video by just keeping up to date with the longer term look at the uh, gfs and eastern ref ensemble just look at the temperature and precipitation over the next couple of weeks so remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description also do check out the channel membership that link is in the description uh, below as well now sorry for a bit of a late upload things have been a little bit uh, complicated today so i am only getting to my computer around half eight so unfortunately this will be only coming out around 9 p.m so a few hours later than usual but hopefully everyone still uh, is still is up to view. So if we do start on the live radar, you can see there is a warmer, more unstable air mass starting to take over Europe. And you can see this by the big thunderstorms over parts of Spain, France, into parts of Germany and parts of Eastern Europe as well. Big, big thunderstorms breaking out and these will likely break out across the UK as well over the coming 48 hours. First thunderstorm back potentially through the early hours of the morning and tomorrow afternoon uh, and then potentially the biggest thunderstorm appearance of the weekend perhaps through Sunday morning into the afternoon as well as we see a bit of a system, a little low pressure system spinning up with increased cape values potentially giving thundery conditions in the south. Now you can see showers have broken out today across many areas across central and southern England, generally though lighter rain, nothing too significant but you can see thunderstorms just to the north of France. However, a different story over parts of Wales and North Wales especially have seen some very very lively thundery showers. Now there haven't been multi cell systems not anything too complex but localized very significant slow moving cells and it has bring uh, has brought some disruption to some areas so if we do actually just uh, briefly have a look at the last 24 hours precipitation um, you'll be able to see significant rain has fallen in a few spots uh, you can see these yellows and reds this is where stationary thunderstorms have been um, again these are radar estimates, so some areas will be higher than this, and of course, in these areas, rainfall falling over the mountains are going to funnel into the valleys. So even though some of these valleys are not seeing extreme rainfall amounts, only perhaps 10, 15 millimetres, it could tot up a lot higher from all the flow um, coming off the sides of the mountains and the hills. So flooding being seen across North Wales, very localised as well. Elsewhere, nothing too crazy and some heavier rain across parts of northern England, but that's been from more persistent rain falling over the past 24 hours. This precipitation here has really only fallen over the last sort of five or six hours or so. Very, very significant storms here. And as I said, going to come more widespread over the next 48 hours. Now, if you have a look at the temperatures, it's been a pretty warm day. Now, it is 8 p.m. as I'm recording this, so temperatures are very much down, but I've only run it back a little bit earlier to late, uh, around 6, 7 p.m. You can see plenty of oranges, so getting up towards the mid to high teens, around low 20s view, 23, 24 degrees has been seen across parts in the south, parts of areas in the south, and across Scotland, we've seen the warmest temperature of the year, got up to 21 degrees in a few spots, so really quite warm. But it is on the downwards trend over the next couple of days. So if we do now start uh, looking at those thunderstorm risks, which are going to be bringing those temperatures down. If we start on the weather warnings, you can see across southern England, a yellow thunderstorm warning is going to be enforced tomorrow. Now, we did see a snap warning in force just for the North Wales that expired a few hours ago. Uh, again, it was for those flash flooding storms um, that we saw on the live radar. But it has expired now, so storm risks there should be subsiding overnight. But from midnight tonight till 10 a.m. tomorrow, that's the first batch of storm activity. While many places will stay dry, thunderstorms will bring heavy rain and lightning to some places early on Saturday. And as we saw in the live radio, you saw those thunderstorms initiating across northern France. Those are likely to drift north, but it's that instability in those storms that could bring the risk um, to southern England.
And again, you can see there is possibility of thunderstorms moving north into southern counties of England during the early hours of Saturday. These then easing later in the morning. Many places will miss the worst of them, but where they do occur, frequent lightning and heavy rain is possible. Few areas could see 20, 30 millimetres in an hour. A small chance of 50 millimetres, most likely near the south coast. Again, high impact, low height, you could, because there is a lot of uncertainty with it. Wouldn't be surprised if we do see more warnings put in force. as does look like potentially through Sunday as well. There's going to be some big storms around. So we do now look at that in detail, we'll start on the UK Met Office run, we'll have a look at precipitation and temperature here, we'll then have a look at the WRF and the RPAIRS runs, looking at their CAPE and precipitation values as well. So if you do start on the precipitation charts, you can see those heavier showers breaking out this afternoon, subsiding, and over the course of this evening, some heavier showers and storms breaking out through the early hours, especially in the south and potentially the southwest. But through the uh, most of the afternoon, it's going to look dry. Potentially parts of southwest England and southwest Wales could be seeing some more storms, as well as southern Ireland could see some more precipitation. Pretty dry through Saturday afternoon into the evening, but you see the next batch of storms arriving for the early hours of Saturday. Significant storm outbreaks across southern England, a line from Kent all the way through the sort of M4 area towards southern Wales and across the Republic of Ireland as well. That moving northwards turning into a big mass of rain eventually, so losing its electricity within the storms, but turning into a bigger mass of torrential rain spreading northwards and behind it through Sunday afternoon. We can see a few more showers and storms breaking out within that before things start to die down a little bit in terms of storm activity we could see again a few thunderstorms in the far southeast through early hours of tuesday and then just generally showers and, and potentially a few thundery showers um kind of weather front moving through on wednesday but that's five days away so things could still change now, if you have the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon, temperatures got up into the low 20s, 20, 21, 22 degrees, a couple of degrees warmer in a few spots, but that's the general gist of the temperatures. And you can see by tomorrow afternoon, temperatures once again rising towards the low 20s, 23, 24 degrees, where we do escape those thundery showers. Because you can see across parts of eastern and southeastern Ireland, only sort of low uh, teens, maybe high single digits under the uh, over the higher ground, where we do have that persistent rain from those thundery showers. And by Sunday, you can see those temperatures are going to be down a little bit, really only getting towards 17, 18, 19 degrees in a few isolated spots, um, because most areas are going to be covered in cloud and rain and the remnants of those big storms earlier in the morning, but widely sort of 10 to 14 degrees, much chillier. But by Monday, you can see temperatures recovering a little bit in the far south, 20, 21 degrees, perhaps in a few spots, and by Tuesday, once again, perhaps around that 18 to 20 degree mark. So still quite warm, but nothing crazy. Um, and you can see by Wednesday, once again, getting towards the low 20s, 20, 21, maybe 22 degrees. So if we do now have a look at the Cape values from the WRF run, you can see significant, uh, only real significant Cape over northern parts of Wales. And that's why we've seen those thundery showers break out elsewhere, nothing too much. That's why the only lightning activity has been in Wales. But you can see some activity over the course of this evening, so still could break out a few storms later tonight. For the early hours, we do see imports. Now, we don't have a massive amount of cape in the far south, so it is likely that the storms this evening could be electric as they approach and decrease in intensity as soon as they make landfall, as we do have not quite as much cape across southern parts of England. So it could just generally be more rain and perhaps a bit of a light show across the channel. So that's a little bit, uh, putting a little bit of scepticism in the thunderstorms tonight in terms of, oh, into the early hours of, sorry, sorry, of tomorrow morning in terms of their um, impact in land, but towards the coast could still be significant. So you keep, see Cape does increase though through the evening and really fires up around midnight. Those, those yellow colours, big energy coming up from the south, fueling those storms before they do dissipate through the afternoon. You can generally see Cape values and nothing too spectacular beyond that into Monday. Now if you do have a look at the raw precipitation charts for these storms, you can see heavy rain and storms across northern Wales, but they should decrease over the course of this evening. You can see more showers and storms breaking out tonight. So, um, it's most significant right along the coast and in the far southwest before decreasing in intensity. And then we see big storms arrive around midnight, 1, 2 a.m., increasing, heading northwards, big, big storm outbreaks before slowly turning into a bigger mass of rain for each Sunday evening before eventually pulling away. So, yes, big storms coming potentially tomorrow morning and lingering maybe into the afternoon, and then another batch heading in through Sunday morning into the afternoon as well. So multiple potentials, or multiple potential systems of storms coming in for many areas in the south. And again, 
In the Midlands, Northern England could still be affected by precipitation. Unlikely to be major storms. We haven't got much cake there. We're not getting any imports. But these storms will head northwards. And yes, decrease in intensity and perhaps become just generally areas of heavier rain, which is something we do need to always keep an eye on. Um, so it could, might not bring any electric activity, any major flooding or anything, but it just could bring miserable conditions through Sunday afternoon and Monday. So we do now have a look at the uh, cake values from the R pairs run over the next sort of couple of days. You can see cake across parts of northern Wales, and that's why we've seen those thundery showers break out. The cape does decrease, and for the early hours, a little bit in the far southwest and across the southern coastal areas, and that's why we could see storms there. Beyond that, we do see Cape increase through the early hours of Sunday, especially through southern areas, trying to spread a bit further northwards, but nothing too crazy in terms of widespread but still enough to produce severe storms. Um, so wherever we do see these lighter colours, that's where we can see storms initiate, and of course they're likely to last a bit longer than that. But you can see by late on Sunday, very little cape around, so more likely just to be a mass of precipitation. And if we do have a look at those uh, precipitation charts from the R pairs run, so those storms breaking out, and eventually breaking out a little bit more through the early hours of Saturday into the mid-morning. Before we do see more showers breaking out, significant storms through early hours of Sunday into the mid-morning. Eventually petering out into a larger area of precipitation. Before we generally see more showers and potentially some heavier precipitation moving in from the west on Wednesday. So if we do finish the video by just having a look at the latest from the ensembles from the GFS and the ECMWF, you can see very warm upper air conditions at the moment, and you can see big precipitation spikes as we see cooler conditions come in behind a little low pressure system that develops on Sunday, bringing those storm activity. And it's this energy we have in the atmosphere from the warm upper air temperatures, which is fueling the storms. But eventually, we do cool down to below average in a few days' time, but we do rise quickly back towards or above average for quite a period of time. Most of the ensemble members are above average for the foreseeable future, all the way into the middle of June. Now, it's not looking bone dry on precipitation fronts, but it is pretty dry. Yes, there are precipitation spikes around, but whenever we have warmer air masses, any little bit of a... Um, uh, instability is going to produce showers and storms so it doesn't look like anything too persistent perhaps uh, except maybe Wednesday we could see some persistent rain um, but other than that um, it does look like generally things will be showery well, unfortunately, it does look like the uh, Weather Central is playing up a little bit with the ensemble, so we won't be able to view the ECMWF today, but hopefully it is sorted out for tomorrow. Just saying too many connection requests for some some reason, so we'll just, we'll just have to view that tomorrow, but uh, they'll broadly be very similar to the GFS. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay safe out there with the thunder reactivity over the next couple of days. It is going to be limited to areas in the south. There will be areas that miss out. There will be areas that will probably get hit quite hard. So, please do keep aware of the weather warnings and keep up to date with the radar as well. Hopefully, a lot of these storms do come overnight. So, don't, don't hamper any uh, plans for your Jubilee weekend. Um... For the rest of the Jubilee weekend, I hope everyone has had a good Jubilee uh, bank holiday the last few days. Uh, Sunday, though, does look like it's going to be a little bit of a washout, potentially, across the Midlands. So that is one thing we do need to keep an eye on. But hopefully most of this storm activity does come overnight and doesn't hamper your plans too much. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.